Welcome to my Abyssal's The Eighth Circle Guide. We finally reached the end with Hephaestos, the perfect imperfection. He's an encounter with three distinct phases he will cycle through. Only two or three attacks are of major difficulty. Learn how to deal with those and you'll survive fairly easily. Let's see how. As mentioned, he has three phases and begins in his fire phase. First up is Genesis of Flame, his raid wide. It does about 40k damage, same as all the fights so far. Heal or mitigate as you have been doing. He will then jump mid and face north for a triple set of Sunforge. Sunforge has two possible attacks, the Dragon or the Phoenix. The Dragon will do a line AoE down the middle of the arena. Phoenix will do a pair of AoEs on the outer sides of the arena. These can be hard to tell their specific widths until you look at the floor. Check out these subtle black lines. These black lines indicate how big the AoEs are. The dragon will hit only within the black line. The Phoenix outside. Keep these in mind any time Sunforge is cast. Immediately following this up is Flame Viper. This is a thin line AoE tank buster, as indicated by the warning tape. Make sure you are not stacking up on the tank, lest you get a Viper to the face too. Don't be afraid to throw a lot of mitigation on either, as there is an additional bleed dot left on you. Reforged Reflection is how he transitions into his other two phases. The first is a return of Hippocampo from the second circle. What he took was knockbacks that cannot be mitigated. You must do the mechanic in full. Hephaestus will jump to the edge of the arena and dash down the middle with blazing footfalls. This will knock back everyone to the left or right depending on which side of the line you are on. Then he will jump to other locations and cause circular knockbacks. The goal is to ping pong yourself from one knockback to the next. You have to remember the order yourself. The first knockback is about one block of distance. All further knockbacks are two blocks in distance. As best you can, be knocked toward the next knockback in line and avoid the walls. It isn't instant death, but it does hurt quite a bit. As do all the jumps when their damage is totaled together. Keep people healed up if they take extra damage. This is followed by Rearing Rampage, which seems to do even less damage than the normal raid wide. Likely due to having to deal with anyone who got knocked into the wall. This will then lead him to transform back to normal and into the fire phase. Immediately, he begins to cast four fold fires. This spawns four proximity markers in the corners of the arena, forcing everyone to stand mid to reduce the damage. These spawn small flame puddles for the next part of the mechanic. He will cast Chthonic Vent, tethering to two random puddles. This will cause the puddles to start bubbling and soon explode into very large AoEs. Move to the furthest point between both puddles. If it is two corner puddles, you want to be at the corner of the square with one of the inactive vents. If the vents are next to each other, you only need to barely be past the midpoint of his hitbox on the opposite side. After the first AoE goes off, Dragons will rise out of the exploding vents and fly into other vents to explode those. These movements are also entirely random, so you must simply react to which vents they fly into. You also do not have the bubbling animation this time. By the time it starts to bubble this time, it's already too late to move. There will be three total explosions before he moves on to casting more attacks like Sunforge. Mechanics will repeat until a second Reforged Reflection. This time, he becomes a Parasite. Into the Shadows will send two targets into the ground, which will then burrow around and stop at opposite ends of the arena. The stopping point is entirely random besides being at opposite ends. When they rise out of the ground, they will cast a Gaze Attack. Look in a direction away from both Parasites as they rise up then immediately run to them and start DPSing them down. Both will cast Gorgonion, which will do damage and put a bone stack on the party. Kill them as fast as you can while the boss constantly spams Gorgo Spit. This is a line AoE that just is there to get in the way of killing the adds. Whether you succeeded in killing the adds or not, Ectothermus is cast. 
This seems to be identical to Genesis Aflame. Check on this one if you do Savage, though. Returning to Fire Form, he will add in his final set of mechanics. Volcanic Torches will be spawned at the edge of the arena and start to trace lines across it. Anywhere a full square is circled will turn it into an explosion. Rather than watching the end point of the circle, watch the opposite side of where the torches begin. If the torches cross one width of the squares, that entire line is going to be set ablaze. If it does not have the fire cross it, you will be safe in that line. He will also add in Hemetheos' Flare, which marks several players with targeted AoEs, spread out so as everyone only takes one hit. They do decent damage, as is par for the course at this point. Later on, it will also target every party member. But then that's it for unique mechanics. From here, everything repeats, but combined together in a few ways. For a small note, Blazing Footfalls will be increased to four total knockbacks. Fourfold Fires will now have Volcanic Torches and Hemithios' Flare added in. As said, Flare can hit all players now, so you need to quickly and further spread out. The Torches throw in their own wrench. There will be only two Torches that start on opposite ends of the arena. These make a pattern of lines that go safe, unsafe, safe, unsafe. So as long as you are next to one of the unsafe lines, you are on a safe line. Parasite Forms Into the Shadows has been upgraded to have clones that blast AoEs across the arenas outside, reducing how much room you have to dodge the worm gazes. Additionally, Volcanic Torches and their two-torch form are also added in, making it harder to reach the Gorgons. Then there seems to be no unique combinations beyond this, which means it's a matter of keeping an eye out for where the torches continually get placed. Things aren't too bad beyond that, and he'll fall in no time. Get that bread. Thank you for watching this guide on Abyssos, the 8th Circle. Leave a like, comment, sub, all that stuff. Follow my socials link below, and maybe follow my Patreon for more content like this. Take care, and may the power of Ananid Hogs lay waste to your enemies. And an extra special thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon, with an extra special thanks going out to... Ashtree Dweller, Ayman al Khatib, Benjamin Han, Benjamin Haynes, Benjamin Rice, Sidia Diosasan, Serix, Ethan Olson, Frasia97, James Hall, JB Hruska, Jericho, Kevin Lowe, Marlon Sebo, Mizella, Nick Griffin, Poppins205, Steven, T Rogue, Timmy, and Zero Two. Take care, and congrats on finishing the tier.